everybody. So I'm just going to wait for a few of you to give me a few waves. I'm waving. Are you waving? I'm waving. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just wait for a few of you to join us. Give us a few waves. Let us know that you're here. So we know there's a 30 second delay. As usual in the Sugar and Crumbs kitchen is John on the iPad and Maria. Hopefully, Hello, John, John. hopefully John hasn't got Hello. his finger over the sound. <laughs> John, that was a big hint. Hopefully you haven't got your hand over the sound, John. No. <laughs> Not now. <laughs> Professional outfit, you know. And we've also got Maria in the kitchen Hello. as well. And I've just realised it's dark, so watch this. The way up. Lights are going on. Lights <laughs> going on. Just realised. <laughs> Get so, some light on the subject. I've got the I've got the pleasure of bringing Dawn Butler with you with us tonight to show you how to use the cake frame. And Dawn's company is called Dinky Doodle, and it's because she's yes. dinky. Have you seen how little she I is? I need a box, honestly, tonight. I feel very small in this kitchen. So I'm actually not doing anything tonight. Dawn is doing all the hard she, work she for you. She's not doing anything tonight. Dawn's doing all the hard work for you tonight with cake frame, and I have agreed to be a little Joey. Big Joey. <laughs> <laughs> At the last minute. So you won't see much of me, but I have got my iPhone on and I'm going to help John with any comments. We've got Louise Brimlow helping out with hi, comments Louise. as well. So a big hi to Louise. Louise actually knows Cake Frame and Dinky Doodle very well. So you do know how it works. There's a 30 second delay before we can see your question. Okay, so we have to see your question and then we get, then we get a chance to answer it. Um, if anybody else, you're all here every Monday night, you all work as a community, which is fantastic. Ask each other, you know, let other people respond and they'll all help you out. I've opened up a new category on our e transcendental. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm trying to feel like I'm, yeah. I've opened up a brand new category on our Sugar and Crumbs um, page and it's called Cake Frame and Dinky Doodle. Mm -hmm. I put it all together so that all Dawn's products are together. Perfect. So, let's, uh, do you want to tell them what you're going to make tonight? Yeah, without further ado. Do. We'll kind of get over to this guy. So this is our 3D stood up cake mummy. He does have a special surprise inside for trick or treat. He's perfect for Halloween. What you're gonna learn though tonight is the fact that we've got a structure going on, how to make this big bubble head cake that's on the top. I thought a mummy was actually really easy to cover because we're not covering an awkward shape with one piece of sugar paste. We've actually got strips here. This is something that the kids can get involved in as well. So it's really something nice for Halloween to get sort of stuck into. As I said, we've got a secret surprise in here. We're also looking at using lights. We've got some lights going on there. Again, if you've never tried a structured cake before, then it's something to have a bash yeah, at just absolutely. there. Well, I've got to be honest, I'm looking forward to that myself. Oh, yeah. I've never done one. So it's gonna be good fun, but again, kind of nice and simple, really, to get our teeth stuck into. So whilst it looks complicated now, you'll go, oh, well, if that was all was to it, then uh, I'd have done something about it sooner. So again, it's a nice introduction cake frame. There's a bit of air brushing going on there, but yes, whilst that's basic, whilst I'm here, we might as well have a bit of a free airbrushing demo as well. I also... <laughs> was she looking forward to? You <laughs> see, Carol thinks she wasn't getting involved, but yeah. she did say to me this afternoon, can I have an airbrushing class? You're going to get it live, kids. <laughs> you will be airbrushing <laughs> in front of the nation. I've um, always been scared of that, though. I've oh, everybody's terrified of it. it. Everybody's yeah. terrified Every time I've looked at it, I'm like, mm. It's smaller than me. Yeah. I don't know why people are scared of it. Yeah. Um, also, the cake foam bundle that we've put together does more than one thing. So we've put kind of a bit of a bundle together, used a bit of this and a bit of that and a bit of that. And I want to show you how versatile it is. So if you look over this Louise shoulder. Louise has just joined. Hello, Louise. So after making an announcement of Louise, <laughs> what, she, she wasn't here. She wasn't here. We were waving and cheering and singing your praises, Lou. <laughs> so Louise. It was all <laughs> so You're late. So Louise, who is late, has now arrived to answer questions. <laughs> yeah, bless her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no worries. So let John tell you about the products that we've got here for sale tonight. So just get John to come on round. Come over here, John. Okay, so basically it's the standing figure, get, figure kit, not a git, it's a kit. We're going to be using a standing figure kit which gives us our height and our structure. Whilst it's called the minion kit, it is so much more versatile than that. So there's loads to it. But we've also got arms and legs going on there. So we've got a special pack, which is the cross and Y joint. It's a new joint of mine, so that's really cool. We've also used some of the parts from the starter kit. 
So whilst you could go and buy a set of rods or this or that or the other, by the time you bought all those bits, mm. you might as well have just bought that. Yeah. And what I'm going to show you tonight is what you could have, I sound like Bruce Forsyth, what you could have won. <laughs> um, because you could use so many for other things. And yeah. I'll show you what's left from the kits so that you can keep going. The airbrushes, ladies and gents, <laughs> you have not been able to get hold of these for a few months. They are back in stock and Carol has them. <laughs> so please, they are like rocking horse poo. Get your hands on an airbrush. You've put together a kit for us, yes. haven't you? So we've got the black airbrushes and we've got the hot pink. Yes, we are. Um, so please specify when you order which one you want. Yes. And we're doing a little set of colours. So these are the water-based colours and I'll take you through them all. We're using yellow and brown tonight. If I move that one out of the way for a second, we're doing a nice little set and it's a what cleaning you said it's solution. The most popular, isn't it? it is the most yeah. popular ones. And these are the nice simple water base, but I'll show you how you can use them and how to get the best out of them. And as a Brucey bonus, God, we are yeah. on Bruce tonight, yeah. aren't we? Yeah. As a Brucey bonus, this was a demonstration that I did for Sweet Success. Love Sweet Success for Bits. Uh, they provide me with all my cake. So I did this as a demo. If you bought the bundle cake frame kit tonight, on Saturday there is a tutorial coming out in this and it uses the same kit as the one that's it. available tonight. So you can that's amazing. It. And this is all cake. All of that yeah. is cake. So I think I'd have to give that a go. It's, it's good fun. Yeah. yeah, it's good fun. But we're going to start with our mummy tonight with a Halloween themed. <laughs> so, the other things that I've used. I've already pre-baked my chocolate cake because you don't really want to watch me baking a cake. Um, and I've used the chocolate lime with that one. Yeah. And then we've got a lime buttercream because I think chocolate and lime will look really good. I think the lime is great for Halloween um, in terms of being inside the cake. So that's really good. So we've used that tonight. We've pre-made all those bits and pieces. And I've pre-made some ganache. Now what I will do for everybody tonight is we'll put a link on your website yeah. for everything that I've used. So for instance, that you needed X amount of sugar paste, that you needed X amount of buttercream, and everything that we've used will all be on there. Also, once this is finished, I know that Carol and John make this available for everybody, but I've got the Cake Frame Club. The Cake Frame Club is free to join, and every other week I put a tutorial on YouTube for free to watch. Now I filmed myself making this at home, piece by piece, and again all the bits that are on there that you need, and that will be launched in a couple of weeks' time. So you will be able to catch it in the future Fantastic. and watch it to your heart's content. Yeah. And do you really mind? Go and back. do if you really, really want to watch me that much, then yeah, go in case you miss a bit. Well, yes, in case you miss a bit. To put an arm on and you never know, this one might be more entertaining because we might completely get it wrong. <laughs> Who knows? John asked me a couple of seconds before we went live. Why do we know what we're doing? Yeah. I haven't got a clue. We'll make it up as we go along because that's what you're watching for. So yeah. I think we're about ready to go. Well, we are. So we've got a couple of shout outs. John, did you want to roll We've got 171 people watching us at the moment. Well, shout out to all 171 of you. Thank you very much. Oh, right. I'll just run back through a few. We've got Mary Williamson, Sarah Williams, Sarah Webster. We've got Louise, Sally McCormack, Angela Knowles, Valerie Swarbrick, Susan Freeman, Sarah Williams. Wendy Ann Preston, Arlene Barton, Martin Dursley, Sarah uh, Hahn, Sarah Saunders, Sarah yeah. Williams. I think, there's, I think I've sent these names a few times. Yes. Um, Robert Allen has joined us. Good evening, Robert. Joanne. Well, there's lots of regulars Joe, on there. Louise, yeah, yeah. Joanne, Salma. So, um, sorry if we've missed anyone. Yeah, so I'm not going to say hi to all of you individually. John shouted you out. I don't know whether there's any questions. Is there any questions so far, John, before Dawn gets cracking? Not at the moment, no. Not at the moment. Okay, are we ready to go? Yes, we are ready And what do you want this big Joey to do at the moment? Well, go out the way. in the moment, yeah, you can sit down and chill. <laughs> sit down and chill. <laughs> Absolutely fine. <laughs> so, let's get started. As I said, we're going to start with the Minion Kit. So basically Cake Frame, if you've never seen or heard of it before, Cake Frame is my little invention, it's my baby, and it's a food grade uh, plastic structural support system basically. Um, I'd love to be able to put on the packaging that it's Meccano for cakes, but Meccano won't let me, but it's that kind of idea. You're going to slot everything together and depending on the configuration that you put, depends on what it is that you're going to make. So it really, really is very, very versatile. Now it's also completely reusable and you can pop it in the dishwasher. So when you've finished with your structure, if you want to, pop it in the dishwasher, use it again and again and again and again and again. However, 
if you've got a business and you're running a business and you want to deal with cake frame, then actually cost up the parts that you've used and then let them go and buy replacement parts because you can buy everything separately too. In fact, if I remember on the sheet, and somebody you can write it as a comment at the end, Dawn, you promised, because then I've got to do it. But on the sheet that I write that says what I've used, I'll tell you what I'll do, is cost up the amount of cake frame parts that you've used and work out how much you've spent. Right. Because then you'd know what you would charge for that cake along with all the other bits and pieces. And you'll see that whilst the bundle or whatever, what were we doing a bundle for, Carol? The, the whole bundle should be 58 99 yep. and doing it for 54 So you're logging some bits in there as well. Yeah. But you'll work um, out that actually you've spent about 15, 15 quid. Yeah. And also, anybody who orders anybody who orders tonight, we're throwing a key lime and a chocolate lime if they order tonight or by lunchtime tomorrow. And anybody who orders through the week, we're just throwing key lime nice. until next week. Nice. Just an incentive. I might even go mad and throw in something else yet. Oh. I think you need to lie down, Carol. Come on, lie down quick. <laughs> John, John's doing the eye contact. I know, yes. <laughs> I need a seat. Yes. Okay, so let's get started with the structure. Now, if we take a look, John, if you wouldn't mind, back at our mummy, you'll see that it's stood there quite happily and it's got um, the head is the bit that's full of cake. Oh, we're going to throw the lights in. Oh, we were going to throw the lights in. Yeah, so the lights of eyes are getting thrown in for free. Nice. Yes. John, stop sweating now, we'll be pleased to know. <laughs> so, the mummy basically, his head is what is the cake. And in order to support that, we need a nice structural support system going on on the inside. Could John, if you come back to me over here. So we're actually gonna start our support with the head. And the reason being is this. If I started at the bottom and connected what these are as the foundation pieces, they're the ones with the threaded rod at the bottom. And if I connected the threaded rod here, by the time I got up to the structure and tried to put that on, what I might well find is that the hexagons aren't lined up properly, and then I'll start to struggle. So we actually start our structure with the head. You place one through one of the holes, take the blanking caps, really important, there's a hexagon, and then there's a flat circle. Flat circle goes to cake frame, like so. I'm, I'm left-handed. I'm trying to do it this way so that camera and that camera catch me, but I'm not being very successful. Put the other one through. And basically these supports will form supports that are inside the cake in the head just to stop it from going anywhere. Okay? So that's how we start. And you end up with like a little table. From there now, I'm going to build the body. But you must remember I'm working on it upside down. So I am now going to start adding little bits from another kit. So this is from the starter kit, this is from the rod selection pack, and this is the short rod. Each rod has a male and a female ending. I'm actually not allowed to say that, you know. Are you not? No, what I'm not, yeah, I'm not allowed to say male, female, I've got to say positive, negative. Oh, have you? What I don't get is why is the female always negative? What is that all about? <laughs> What's that about, John? John, what is that about? John would be. <laughs> yeah. Same with my husband. Hello, all of you watching. Right, that one's going in there and push it down. Now, in a minute, it will all become clear, but what supports the arms is that cross and Y joint that I mentioned. But I don't know whether you can see from here, but the cross and Y joint don't take up the same amount of space. So they won't allow me, if I put another short rod in here, they actually won't be even... So what I need to do is something else, and it's a little bit of clever jiggly pokery. When you understand cake frame and you understand the measurements of each of those parts, then it helps you start guiding which part I need where. So what I actually need in this set of circumstances is a connector is great for giving me my height adjustment, but a connector is the female female, so it's not gonna work. So I take an adapter out of the cake frame uh, starter kit, Pop that in place, and now that will sit on top. You'll see that the different heights, but the different heights for a reason, because remember that these two took up different um, heights as well. So, which arms go in where? That one's going that way around. You notice how I've got it into a little bit of an angle. It's going off on an angle. Inside here is a core that's a hexagon shape, and it's a locking mechanism. It means that an arm that's here can't 
rotate with cake on it, it's stuck and it's oh, locked. That's a good idea, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Clever, aren't you? No. My head's full of cotton fluff. That's all that's in this head. But it means that if I've got it in one direction, all I need to do is actually just lift it out and redo it. However, I can very, very gently, until it's all the cake is in and everything else, just simply twist and turn, and now I've got that going straight on. In this one, we're going to put the cross joint. It's worth mentioning that the joints come in half. And the joints come in half, it's got nothing to do with my manufacturing cost, she says. It is about 20 grand cheaper to produce something in half. But it also means that I can put lighting, wiring, ribbon, anything that I want through cake frame because I can feed it through, yeah. then clamp that round and then I can pop it in the cake. So I'm gonna push my other joint in there now. Can you now see, look, that actually they're at a much, much more even height. Now we're going to start building the legs. Remember, we're upside down, folks. So, two long rods. So these are the longest rods that I do in the pack. And they're on like so. And then, get. This is the remainder, then, of the Minion Kit. So this is two medium foundations. By the by... Even if you're not planning on making something that stands up, this is the only kit that comes with four foundation pieces. You cannot make a piece of cake foam without a foundation piece because it bolts stuff together. Yeah. And the fact that there's four in one pack, even if you want it for spare parts, and the, the medium foundation, let me show you the other two. So in your starter kit, you're gonna get a short foundation and a long foundation. Okay. I'm just looking. Yeah, I'm not talking to you. <laughs> so, <laughs> short see. foundation and a long foundation. You caught my eye all of a sudden. Oh, no. I was doing ever so well to start with. <laughs> the long foundation I use when I'm doing things like the pouring kit or something where my gravity is up high and I need as long and as structural support as possible at the base. The short foundation I use when I need to take something off at an angle straight away or I want to use it to bolt a platform in place. So, they're great. That one you need to add rods to it to make a standard height wedding cake height, and that one's too long. Those I've had measured to be exactly the right height for a wedding cake, and you've got four of them. So if you take a six-tiered wedding cake, you're never actually gonna start with one support in the middle. You'd probably start with four. Well, they're there for 15 quid, along with the baseboards and everything else that you need. So these I use loads. Anyway, we're gonna whack those on the top. So do you now see that you've got your structure and it's started to line up? All I now need to do is take the baseboard and place it upside down. Tie on my um, lock nuts. Always a quarter turn backwards, folks. Quarter turn, you'll feel the thread. You'll feel the thread, take a grip. She says, now that you stick the camera on me, I can't turn it off. Right, a few people have got a bit lost with all those instructions. You don't need to get lost with instructions, okay? <laughs> One said it's Debbie Hallep says it's double dutch to her. Yeah, Wendy Debbie. Preston, Wendy Preston said, can we send it ready made? Yes. <laughs> okay. When you follow the tutorials and everything that I've done that's on YouTube is done, use this, then this, then this, then this. All you need to do is have the parts in front of you. Yeah. Follow the instructions and away you go. And you know, it's quite confusing for people when they sit and watch it and they've never had a go. But you know when it's in front of you and you're building it, it makes perfect sense. Well, I was just going to say, I think listening to you, it sounds more confusing than it actually is. But I think that's because yes. you're using the, the big title names for what they're called. Yes. Whereas I think if we just stuck them all together, that height, there you go. Yes. <laughs> And that's the but way you're giving all the correct words for it. Well, also, if I didn't explain it, I'd still lose exactly. you. Exactly. Because you wouldn't know what I was using. Two long rods that are left. Structure's finished. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. So you can turn that upside down and it ain't going anywhere. Yeah. It's, that's your structure. Yeah. It's lightweight. It's food-grade plastic. Um, and that's it in a nutshell. It's done, basically. Yeah. Okay. Show people the finished cake again, just so yes. they you know what they're trying to get yeah. to. So can you now see, there's the arms that are sticking out. Yeah. yeah, bring up there. Yeah. Okay, you got that? So, 
Here's our legs. We're gonna do something in the middle in a minute to fill out the body. But there's an arm, there's an arm, and here's the support which is gonna help the head for the cake. Okay? Yes. I think that's what they're trying to get together. Yeah? <laughs> mm -hmm. Done and dusted. And it took us a couple of minutes. If I were to go to a certain DIY store and try and build a structure, I'm going to certainly spend a lot more money than the 15 quid yeah. or whatever that we've got it for sale at, and also a lot more time. So let's try and reduce our hourly rate, shall we, from 50p yeah. to at least 75 Well, they're liking it. They're liking it, which good. is good. So now we've got it. Brilliant. Now comes the easy bit. So basically, we're going to plonk our cake on. Now don't do... You said it made sense once you got it over there. Yes. So what they're saying is once you put it there, they it realised made it made sense. While yes. it's like that, they've no idea what Well, I was doing. also building it upside down, don't forget, folks. Yes. Yeah. But you have to yeah. build it upside down. So we're getting all the thumbs up. But now we're getting it. Good. Somebody said, so clever putting that together upside down. I think... it, but it's, it, and it's how... Guys, I've just thought about this, as in I've made all the mistakes first. Yeah. So before I came out with the product, I was like, right, well, how would you build it? How would you put it together? Yeah. And the first thing I used to do was build it from the bottom yeah. on this particular structure yeah. and realised when I got to the top that I couldn't put the, they were in the wrong place. Yeah. So I've learned, that's all. Yeah. Now, I've cut, I deal with rather large um, slabs of cake because the cakes that I make are massive usually. Um, so I've cut mine and I use the six inch platform to cut. I shouldn't have done that. John, if you swiss right back round to the mummy, can you see that his head's actually quite round and fat? So you could have used hemisphere tins on that one, but it's larger than a six inch at its widest point. And at its smallest point, it's probably about four and a half to five inches. So come back round again. So the, the kind of stupid mistake that I made was not thinking about it when I was rushing out the door and I've cut my cake at six inches. So he might have quite a long, elongated, more like a Frankenstein head, but hey ho. However, Lou Brimlow, thanks Lou, did rescue me with a slightly larger cake this morning. Oh, did she make it for you? Bless, Bless her. her. <laughs> um, Lou just Brimlow, let me, who let me happened to be on the Great British Bake Off, by the way. Yeah. Let me just say, that. do you want to just tell everyone um, that Louise is doing links to the, to the Sugar and Crumbs website for yeah. us? Yeah, oh, bless her. So, basically, Lou um, is busy away kind of answering questions, and she's also putting links to all of the Sugar and Crumbs website stuff. So when things are on Sugar and Crumbs, She's linking everything through to this, all the products and everything else. And any questions you've got with tutorials or whatever, then she'll link through to YouTube yeah. and whatever. Yeah. Okay. But thanks, Lou, for the cake. Yeah. Much appreciated. It looks very good. So, I'm actually going to start with the larger cake. Hand underneath, hand on the top, and basically it just punches out two little holes of cake. Was it good, Lou? I hope it was, you know, supposed to be eaten. No, no, it's good. Good cake. <laughs> so, that's all it punches out. So we're not looking at putting dowels in a cake after we've made it. We're basically making the cake on the structure. Yeah. Okay? And I'm just going with one larger one so you can see that the head hopefully will, will take a little bit of shape. Carol, please may I now have the bowl of buttercream? Yeah. Do I need to repeat it a bit? I think, I think it, it should be no, fine. It's actually fine, actually. Should this be is very fine. nice and luminous. It is. So we've put the lime green colour splash on there. And, the and I've used the key lime. It's gorgeous. It. John, look at the key lime. If, if Donna was the tube in front, exactly the same colour. Yeah. Tubes. So that's how really good. can tell how realistic it is. And we've gone with the usual recipe that Carol suggests on the back of the packet. So we've gone with the key lime one. So I should have another palette now somewhere. Sorry. Reaching across you. Plonk some of that on place. Spread it about a bit. Now quite often when I do carving, I won't fill it first. But in this instance, it's nice and secure and I know it's not gonna slide anywhere. Um, quite often if you put jam and sort of buttercream in there and then try and carve something, it does slide. But this is gonna mean that everything's all right. And you can really get hold of this, you know, to move it about and manipulate it. The question is, the question, does the cake have to be firmer than normal? No, I don't think it does. But if you're dealing with a lot of rods in the middle, if you were putting your wedding cake on and you've got five rods to go on, then I would suggest that you deal with that cake chilled or frozen just to allow you some support. 
And basically it's all about that hand underneath and then down. The other alternative to do is to keep the cake where it is on a surface, take a platform as a template and now push down the rods into the cake here so that I'm not risking it breaking and bending. Then when I go to lift it, you can either waste a platform and it sits on the bottom and you never see it again, but it's allowed you to lift the cake, or at least you've now got your holes in that cake and it's easier to guide on. So two ways of making holes, basically. But no, don't worry about the firmness of your cake. On goes the next one. Push down two holes. Now, we've finished with our supports, as in they've not gone any further. If my cake was going, you know, a massive amount of a big tower, like um, Abraham Lincoln hat, let's say it was wearing, then I would simply, with the rods that I had left in the rod selection pack, I would continue building, building that. Yeah. yeah. Let's say that it was um, a creature that had got incredibly long legs and it was body and head that needed to go on yeah. here. Then of course your structure is going to continue. Yeah. Simple as that. Um, but the minion kit ordinarily is just this set of legs down at the bottom here and then the yeah. platform's all the way down there. But the same kit allows us to do all sorts of I was of just going to say, it's just about thinking about the size of the cake. So how do I to. design a cake? Mm. A way I'm designing a cake, take the outer image of the cake that you have in mind. Let's say that you know you've got to build an Angry Birds or a Minion or a something that's something well known and recognised. Take the image and start drawing on it. Well, where would I put a platform? Where are my legs going to go? Where is that going to go? And it starts to give you an idea of, well, I'm going to need an elbow joint, aren't I? I'm going to need a whatever. And then what I suggest to people is that actually you haven't got a cake order on. Take cake frame out and build it. Or put it on a table near your husband. And they start building stuff for you <laughs> and going, did you know I could do this? Unless you're married did to you John. Know? And, <laughs> you, do you know, well, I gave, when I first invented cake frame, I gave the prototypes and I put them down on the table just to see what would happen. Within three minutes, my kids had built these great big guns yeah. and they were seeing how long that they could get in yeah. front of them. Yeah. yeah, Paul had built something else with yeah. it. So it starts to create ideas going. And to see whether it's going to work or not, We've all got tins of beans in the cupboard or packets of icing. Yeah. Actually weight it down with that. Yeah. Is it going to fall over? Is it going to do this? Because at the end of the day, bless them, it's a good piece of kit, but you still need to pay attention to the laws of physics. I stand behind John. Yeah, no, he's talking to Doctor, I know. Well, it's like we're having a conversation. It's like you're really here, Carol. Right. I am, but look at John. I am. <laughs> I'm thinking about this head and how wide we're actually going to go with it. Because I want to put something on the top. So what I think I'm going to do with this one is, sorry, let's move that out of the way for two seconds. And let's get one of the four inch cakes, uh, six inch cakes rather. And use this as We've a bit of cake a cake Maria. Maria's a cake bend. <laughs> chocolate lime. I know. It's, it's a lovely chocolate lime. Do you know, chocolate limes is the sweets are my favourite. Yeah. Hello, anybody listening that likes to buy me some sweets at the next <laughs> CI, my favourite. Um, all I've done then is just cut out a rough circle in the middle. I've not necessarily gone to the four inch line. A little bit smaller than that, so I knew I've got some boundaries. And then just pop that one in the top. So you should now be able to see, I tilt that forward. We've now got cake with a great big hole in it. Because... Before I eat them all, because there is great risk that most of these won't make it inside the Well, I'm the amazed there's any after, because I've, I've avoided them. They're my damn for yeah. they're sweet. But we thought it'd be fun for Halloween if actually it was full of stuff, like his brains. So these, they look, they're going to look yeah. disgusting, aren't they, when yeah. they're cut? Um, so these are Coca-Cola laces, not the strawberry laces. They look a bit fab. And we'll put some of these in. like so. And then, on this version, the version that I made before, what I did was actually let down some of the buttercream oh, yeah. to a, a quite runny fondant, right. you know, like a fondant fancy yeah. type, um, so that it would bleed right. and it would really run right. when it cut. But I still need some of it for afterwards, so I won't do that on this occasion. You've got, um, one, you've got one bit of brain hanging out there. Have I got a bit of brain? Yeah. Oh, that's nice. 
So don't just think of this for Halloween. This could be, um, it could be a minion. It could be anything you like. And actually you've cored out some of the body on the cake and that it's um, basically got that in it um, as a bit of fun. So let's put a bit more buttercream in the middle because that's what we're doing. People are saying they're quiet because they're engrossed. I'm it. sorry. So Please no, talk no, to me. Are you still out there? I'm not, so glad. So if they're not saying anything, it's because they're engrossed. Okay. So just putting another bit of filling on there like you would. And then I think probably, you know, this one will about do us. Okay. She's done good deep sponges there, Louise. So she has blessed cotton socks. I, again, we could have gone with that this needs to be a bit rounder. Somebody but, says, where well, I've said you've got brain hanging out. She said, I know just how you feel. <laughs> She's got her brain hanging out. Right, loving it. They're loving the colour, loving it so far. So I think when you cut that, it'll look really nice and vibrant. It'll look very Halloween-y. It's all a bit good fun. So I like that rather a lot. Now, we are going to just get a little sharp knife. What I want to do is take this at an angle and I'm taking it at a 45 degree angle in that direction, basically, because I want to start shaping that head in that round. And as I say, I've not got the right sponge for this, but just in the right angle, go round. When I carve a cake, and you'll see it's more relevant when I do uh, the top one, you only ever carve half a cake, if that makes sense. And I carve it in a clock, so let me work to the top. I've got to, honestly, I'm to get your little step? No, I'm fine, I'm fine. <laughs> so, you work at this 45 degree angle and you work in half a clock. There's 12 o'clock, there's six o'clock. I'm left-handed. I work from six o'clock to 12 o'clock and stop. Rotate the cake. Six o'clock to 12 o'clock and stop. If I were to go from six o'clock to 12 o'clock to 11 o'clock, look what happens to the angle of my knife. Completely changes. So you will never ever end up with an evenly carved cake. So half a clock is the way to go. So six o'clock, round to 12 o'clock and stop and turn. And then six, round to 12 and stop. Do you know what's really lovely? For once I'm making a mess in someone else's <laughs> kitchen. I noticed. Good, isn't it? Okay. Then what you do, when you carve, you don't over-carve. Loads of people over-carve and they end up with a cake that was supposed to feed 40 and it only feed 12 because all they've done is just kept going and kept going and kept going. What I actually do is do one lot of cutting. Can you see then how you make an angle here and an angle here? Yeah, so you make sort of two angles. You're only gonna make more angles the more that you cut. So actually what you do with it after that is you rub it. <laughs> oh, look at that. Oh, and that gives a proper shape, doesn't it? And then it goes a proper shape. Oh, come get off the all the sweeties we need them. Yeah, I'll show you the cake crumbs. I'll show you all the cake crumbs then. <laughs> so it's absolutely fine. Lou, I'm sorry there's a bit more of your cake coming off here. So again, don't be afraid to, that's what the frame is there for. Get hold of the frame, move the cake around to suit you. Well, that shows you how secure it is, doesn't it? If you can get hold of the frame and start moving it around. Start pulling it out. And I've had the baseboards made in a nice neat white plastic. I thought that they looked nice and clinical, nice and clean, but also it means that you don't have to cover them if you don't want to. The one that we've done tonight, we've covered in uh, sugar later on, but it doesn't have to be like that. There we go, we'll just lop a bit more off. And you know, that's as finesse as that gets. We're gonna cover it in a bit of ganache and then it's getting covered in bandages. You don't need to spend time on this one, folks. The great thing is, is that we're doing something with the kids that's fun for Halloween, it's great for the party, but it's not going to break the bank and it's certainly not going to take you 12 hours to make. If you start making this as orders that you can sell, then basically you can be making money out of it and that's the beauty of this. Now, I'm looking for my ganache, that's what my eyes are wandering back for. Yeah. Carol, would you please heat up my ganache? Yeah, I'm probably about to... 20 seconds. Right. So, very hot. ganache, yeah, go for 20 then, no more than that. Ganache basically I use because it forms a solid cement and I like it because it allows me to add not, like a, not only like a glue but also a support for the cake that you're doing. Ganache basically is the recipe that I use if it's a dark chocolate recipe, not a good quality in terms of price, but 70% cocoa, 
then you want two parts chocolate to one part double cream. Bring the double cream up to the boil, add the chocolate in pieces, so chunks or droplets ideally, take off the heat and stir it it's done, and then it's set. If you're making a white chocolate ganache, then basically it's three parts white chocolate and one part double cream. I can put that on the sheet. If you write it in the comment, Dawn, you promised me my ganache recipe, then I'll pop that in there for you as well. Now, whilst Carol's doing that, let's have a bit of a mop up. Really useful tip, which I haven't used tonight, but what I do when I'm carving a cake is actually put either a carrier bag or a few bits of cling film out on the surface. And it basically means that I can then um, sweep up easily. But I've not done that. Thank you. I also use all of my offcuts for um, making a cake pop mix, but I don't make cake pops. If you take a look at my fast food stack behind and you watch the demo in a couple of weeks, you will see how I've used cake pop mix to actually start molding cake. Um, and I use that with ganache, it's absolutely brilliant. Particularly if you need some uh, weight. Rice crisp treats are great for molding, but obviously they're very light. And sometimes we use them because we need um, no weight. But um, when you need the weight, then I go with um, cake pot mix moulding. So that's what I would have been using this for. And again, if you keep that on a nice, thank you, if you keep that on a nice food safe surface, then you can use all of that as well. I've done with that, Carol, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right, quick swig of gin. It's water, honestly. So, Rice Krispie Treats. Um, again, I have a great recipe for these, um, but life's too short. When I make Rice Krispie Treats, what I do is take a big microwavable bowl, take a big bag of marshmallows, or it's a pot. You know the Haribo's do a pot, or as to do those big American um, marshmallows. So take a bag of them. Take the cheapest Rice Krispie Treats that you can find. You pour your marshmallows into a microwavable bowl. You do that first, don't do that second, because they'll just explode all over the place. Then basically add your Rice Krispies, put it in the microwave, and it all mushes together. Then two spoons. You stir it with two spoons, because if you stir it with one, you'll want to wipe the spoon and you'll get absolutely covered, and leave it. Because life is too short, pre-bought ones are absolutely perfect. Only buy them when they're on offer, folks. They go down to like half price, these are a quid. And I stock up when they're a quid and then I've got them to hand every time I need them. The reason that I use these ones is they're actually like building blocks. So I could get a nice defined shape with whatever it is that I wanted to do, but actually just start using these as a building block. So I find those quite good for that. Let's get my palette knife back out. Louise is having problems with her internet. I wish she. Yeah, she's frozen, but we're not frozen. No, I, I'm quite warm in here, it's very nice, it's very pleasant. So, what I'm doing now is just bobbing a bit of ganache on the inside of the framework, and then I'm going to put it on the underside of my platform. It doesn't matter what mess I make at the moment at all. Your microwave is very hot. Is it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. So that's probably a bit too runny. What you're looking for, and it doesn't matter because it'll firm up. What we're looking for is the consistency of soft butter rather than caramel. Um, but it firms up pretty quickly, so we're all good. And what I'm going to do now is, rather than going that way, can you see how that's just a touch too short? So I'm going to turn it the other way. I'm just going to come to the back so that I can measure where I need to cut. Do one and see if that's going to work. Yeah, so I've gone a bit wider, but that's good because it means I can wedge it. Some people can't use them because they're not vegan friendly. Then, uh, vegetarian friendly. Yeah. So if they're not, then I'd be using my cake pop, pop mix. So if you've made yourself a nice vegan cake, then actually use a mix that suits you. But what you're looking for is some sort of mouldability, yeah. basically. You could use the fondant. So use sugar paste if you want yeah. to, modelling chocolate, whatever you can lay your hands on or feel comfortable to use is absolutely fine. Um, I have a spatula. 
So because we're bricklaying, this is our mortar. And we've not only now got it on the sides of cake frame, but I've also got it in between our layers as well, whilst we're at it. It's good because it shows how much you can squeeze that frame and it's not doing any... No, it's moving backwards and yeah, forwards as I do it, yeah, but nothing's exactly. coming off. Nothing's coming off at all. And then I think probably one more and that'll do because we need to leave room that he's actually got legs. Some make theirs with um, halal marshmallows. Oh, brilliant. I didn't know that you could get those. Yeah. That's perfect. If you know a link, guys, and you want to pop that in the comments, that'd be really, yeah. really helpful. So there you go, Salma. That's your job. How to make um, halal marshmallows. No, how to make the Rice Krispies with a halal marshmallow. Marshmallows, that's it. And where to get halal marshmallows. Every day's a school day, you see? I've learnt something for them. Somebody said you can also use silver foil, that works too. It does, it yeah. does. I have a thing. Because you're not eating that bit really, are you? You're it? not, but I do have a thing that I like my cakes to be edible. And yeah. I don't like them full of stuff that isn't, right. basically. Um, but yes, tin foil is fine too. Okay, so that's all pushed up into place. I think that's as far as we'll go. We don't need to cover the arms because I think they're quite a nice width actually. So some um, Mary Wilkin Williamson has just asked, which category would you be allowed to use cake frame for cake international like this mummy or other bubble? Any there? that says internal supports is permitted. Right. Because so, it's a food safe internal structure. So any of the categories for cake international that say food support. It's a recognised food support. support. Yeah. Right, that's good. So that's all fine. I know there was talk, wasn't there, about the um, safety seal and whether you could or couldn't put it in flowers but it's not that controversial it's it's just a food support um which is good and if it says that you have to use a food safe support i.e you can't use wood or metal then cake frames your baby right let me just wipe right. my while you're doing that louise has asked can we can john just go over there yeah, and have a look at look at your food thing while you're doing that together And then Louise can say what she wants that for. Do you want to go in close on it? So what have you made the chips out of? They are chocolate paste, white chocolate paste. White chocolate paste. And they are just cut. Airbrushed. Yeah, and airbrushed. And every section is cake, is it? Every section is cake. So the bottom fries section mm -hmm. is my moulded cake pot mix. Right. Instead of rice crispy treats. The Buckets of popcorn is three layers of this Death by Chocolate sponge. Right, three the layers of Death by Chocolate sponge. Popcorn is made the of? The popcorn is white chocolate paste. White chocolate paste. Airbrushed. Your burger? The burger is cake. It's two layers of Death by cake? chocolate cake. It is cake. Oh, that. Yeah. And what have you done? Coated it with sugar paste after? Yeah, chocolate paste. Chocolate paste, okay. Which airbrushed. Right. And then the lettuce and cheese is gone. So yeah. And that's all um, chocolate paste. And the drink? And the drink is one, two, three, four layers of four inch Death by Chocolate Cake. Right, four layers of Death by Chocolate Cake. Yeah. Right, very good. Chocolate inch white chocolate cake. I have to tell you, that is amazing. But everything you do is amazing. Oh, stop it. Yeah. Oh, trust me, I have bad things. I get scared when I look at your stuff, it's so good. No, thank you. Babe. So, whilst you've been gone, all I've been doing is adding a bit of ganache to this. And as I say, it is a little runny, but it's no problem. Carol's fault again. No, it isn't. It was, I told you how long to do it for. That was all. Well, I did it for 20 seconds, but it was rock hard. So I put it in for another 20. Oh, well, there you are. It was the last 20 that it, she's ruined it. I, I, I can't work in these circumstances. I'm going. <laughs> I couldn't stick. It wouldn't stir. <laughs> it was rock no, hard. No, I know. It was rock hard. 20 seconds was rock hard. The spoon wouldn't even go in it. No, I know. Yeah, but there was like a big layer of separated butter on the top. Oh, right. <laughs> it's me demo. Demo box. Okay, so a little bit of ganache on there. It's because we're not dealing with a wedding cake, we're not dealing with something that needs basically a really sort of smooth coat. So if I'm dealing with ganache in all sorts of circumstances, it has what we call a crumb coat on it, which basically attacks the crumbs and covers the crumbs up. And then I'd go back for another coat to smooth off. Then I'd go back with hot boiling water and smooth again. But this is something that, I mean, look at the mess I'm making. This is something that the kids can just get stuck into. It's brill, basically. So that for me is enough that I know that my um, sugar paste is going to stick to this cake um, and that acts as part of my glue and that my cake isn't going to dry out should some of it not be covered. So 
I'm happy enough. If I wasn't happy with the shape and I'd got the cake that I'd got because I was an idiot and cut it too short, if you want to change the shape of the head, then actually simply mould those into there as well. And again, you'll need a little bit of that chocolate ganache just to help it stick onto the plastic. But you really can sort of mould these round in, in any shape that you like, basically. Our friend Karen Davies has joined us. Good evening, Karen. She's going to be here next Monday. Bless her. I love Karen. Yeah. And I love her moulds even yeah. more. Right, we need to ganache this body together because we want the body to stay put. One of the viewers wanted a better shot of it, so love the McDonald's cake. Yeah, I've done that. One of the viewers wanted that's why she actually just um, the viewers wanted better a better shot. shot. Yeah. Up. We'll go back to it again in a couple of times. And as I say that, if you join on to Cake Frame Club or subscribe to the U channel of Cake Frame, that'll be on there in a couple of yeah. weeks. I think it'll be on on Saturday actually, if I get it edited and out. And that was a live demo I did at Sweet Success in two hours from start to finish. Debbie Groves has said, sorry, it took forever to get the sprogs to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Missed all of this, but she's with us now. Oh, welcome <laughs> Debbie. Somebody says, why boiling water, please? So, if I'm smoothing a cake down, basically you've got your ganache, but you've put it in the fridge and let it go hard. So you need something hot in order to smooth out the ridges. You can't use hot tap water, it's not hygienic. You must use boiling water, basically. Does nice that mean you want some water? No, because we're not, we're not getting to that stage. But if I was dealing with a wedding cake and I wanted a decent ganached surface, it's fridged and then it's hot boiling water to smooth over. We're just going to stick this to one side, so it's, it's not going to matter, basically. I'll get you a couple of clean cloths for cleaning now. Thank you. So, my ganache, if it was more like the consistency that I wanted, Karen McFarlane, then um, I wouldn't be holding my rice crispy I've ruined your ganache, I've ruined Louise's ganache. It's quite alright. Louise's ganache, ganache was rock hard by the time I finished with it. I'm just going to follow instructions. <laughs> Clearly not. <laughs> Clearly not. Now the other solution for this would be my ice spray. So I do a chocolatier's ice spray, which basically uh, instantly freezes chocolate. So if I couldn't be bothered to stand away for it, that's what I'd be doing. Yeah. So somebody said, what is the best cake to use if you don't like chocolate cake? But you can use any cake, can't you? Yeah, you can. I usually use a vanilla. It was the fact that it was Halloween and I wanted something to go with lime. Yeah. So, so I went with the chocolate. Yeah. Um, but no, actually, you know, vanilla cake. There's no anything. hard set rules what no. flavour you use. No, you know, always go with what you like because then you're, yeah. you're going to want to eat it and you're going to want to yeah. enjoy it, basically. And if you don't want to do chocolate, uh, dark brown, cho brown chocolate, you can use white. White ganache, yeah. yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Right, let's hope that that kind of stays. Now then, Carol, my little Joey, a little right. kangaroo, because Joey's on yeah. Side, yeah. Um, can Just you come and help clean down for me? Right. Whilst, I'll clean down, right, okay, since I've made all the measures. Yeah. Whilst I move on to the next bit. Right, okay. Someone has asked, I bet this takes ages to make. No. Yeah, it wouldn't if I had another all the No, dish. no, it doesn't, we're nearly done. We're nearly done, basically. Yeah, if she hadn't melted the ganache, we'd have moved on and oh, it. Right, can you just move to one side for me? And what we need to do is make sure, keep your eye on that, and if it slides, it wants to come back over. Can you wipe the board down for me? Yeah. And generally give it a clean up, and then John come over here, because we will move on to something else. So, basically to make the light-up eyes, uh, there's loads of things. I don't know whether you've seen any of the cakes that I make, but I put movement in cakes, I put lighting in cakes, I put sound in cakes, but I always make sure that everything's nice and food safe. What I really love about cakes is that, yes, it's cake, but it's the fact that it does something and it's amazing, but you'd want to eat it and you can cut it. You're not fighting your way through all these Rice Krispie treats or everything else that isn't particularly edible um, to get to the bit of the cake that's inside. So, on this cake, however, I wanted to make it nice and simple. So we're going to use balloon lights. Balloon lights are a bit fab. And basically, w these are the bits that we're chucking in for free. If yeah. you buy the kits, we'll chuck you in two lights, basically. Yeah. Um, so that so you can make it. A bag of icing sugar, a bag of cocoa powder tonight. Yeah, and, and then lights. Now then, I'm cutting the balloon. This is on the whole set, if you buy the whole set. I buy the whole set, okay. So if you cut open the balloon, what you find is, is there's your light inside, basically. And the X and Y joint they get. Oh yeah, they get the X and Y joint. New joint, that. 
Really, really useful. Right, is that clean enough? That's lovely, thank you. Is that stuck? No, it's sliding down again. Give it oh, a... Sorry. It's all right. It's warm in here as well, so it's going to take ages to set. Okay. So, balloon lights. Basically, when you then pull out the tab, that's what will set the light going. Now, it says on the packet that it will do for 12 to 15 hours. I made the mummy that stood in the room that's finished, I made that... Um, can we put, have a look at one of them bottles, see if the bottle will go in. Yeah, put some of else in to support. So I made that uh, dummy, mummy, dummy, mummy, uh, last Monday, and it's still uh, lit up now, basically. So that's well over our 12 hours. Bro. Um, so these really will kind of last quite a while, but these to me are a choking hazard. So we can't put these directly into our cake. However, if we take the cake frame connector, you remember we've seen one of these already tonight, we've used one. These come in a pack of six and they come in that starter kit. And actually you'll find, if I'd have cut a bit more off, it would fit, but there's a bit more balloon left on there. But basically these slot inside the connector. I've got greased fingers, so I can't do it. There we go. So they slot inside there, so now that you're not gonna choke on it, we can put this in the cake because this is food safe and it allows our lights to shine out for our eyes. So that is basically the eyes. We would slot those then inside our cake. That I've propped up. Uh, that you've propped up. It is ridiculously warm in here, folks. Ridiculously <laughs> warm. <laughs> I know, I know. And again, a bit firmer ganache and that will make it stick, but it's what happens on live telly. So you go with it. So I'm cutting another one. I'm gonna cut the same color actually. You'll find that some of them light up different colors and all sorts, so you could be sent, oh, a multi-color of um, bits and pieces through. I think it takes a lot of Well, it'll be fun, it'll be fun, yeah. And push that in there. And then that is our other eye. Okay, like so. Uh, Carol, please. Oh, there's the clock. Yep, it's all right. I've got it. Okay, guys, would you actually believe that we're ready to cover him? So we're ready and we're nearly, nearly done. I'll just come down and wipe this. Oh, is one of his eyes just falling out? <laughs> Honestly, everything's well, popping out. Well, this is why it's live on the night, so they can see how it happens to them. If it was. Um, Anything else. If you did it perfect, everybody would say, oh, well, that's Me, just do perfect. something perfect. So it's better to see happen. it as it is. Never, ever going to happen. There we are. Right. Sorry, right, you're all clean off now. If you can take me to yeah. yes. Okay. So we're ready for covering. Covering is going to be nice and simple. Do you want to get any chocolate out of your fingers or anything? Do you know, I've always got chocolate in my fingers, but we said, Mummy, and I'm going to airbrush it brown in a minute, oh, so okay. I'm really not that bothered. <laughs> and you're covering it anyway, Carol. Uh, <laughs> one of the best things, apart from the amazing flavoured ice and sugar that I got in my little parcel from Carol. Where's this? I love it. <laughs> um, I'm always looking for a little dusting pouch. Um, do you know one of my favourite dusting pouches was what? from India and it was from the lady that was with, it was her grandmother Sari. Oh, yeah. And it was like a proper muslin, but it was beautiful. Yeah. But I lost it. So I was delighted when this came. Okay. So we've got some white sugar paste. I've already rolled out a little bit. And all we're going to do is make some strips, guys. That is it. So, need a way. Yes, I'm going to get chocolate in it, but as I said, we're going to yeah. airbrush it. So, it doesn't, just, really just matter. Doesn't, it matter. doesn't matter. Doesn't matter on this occasion. Obviously, you would usually be nice and neat, but you don't want to sit here and wash, watch me wash my hands. So, I'm going in, um, I've gone in a, a sort of strip, but I'm now going to go wider. And it doesn't matter. Don't go too thin. You don't necessarily want anything to tear on you as you put it up. That's the only thing. Um, I must say though that Sugar Paste Direct's really good for the sort of elasticity of it, yeah. so um, I don't think you'd really have that as an issue. And then, John, if you wouldn't mind taking a look, closer look at the dummy, can you see that there's a texture on the sugar paste? Can you see this texture around it? 
So can you see that it's not a flat piece of sugar paste? They it's look a little bit like bandages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what I've used, if you want to come back this way, <laughs> it's a non-slip mat. All I've done is place it down and use it like an impression mat. Yeah. And it puts in the impressions like a bandage, basically. And we sell them on the website. Woo! Ours are, ours are big ones, but they can cut them up. Well, that's all I do is cut them up. Guys, you must make sure they're clean. I airbrush on most of them, so I always yeah. give mine a bit of a wash before yeah. I start um, doing stuff, basically. We've got them on the Scrippo mats, if anybody else. Right, yeah. Just make sure I can actually lift this up. There we go. And then we're just going to cut it into strips. You can be as rough and ready as you like with this. Don't go too wide. I've probably gone about a centimetre, just over a centimetre, maybe a centimetre and a half. That's it. Keep going with the strips. Now we've got a bottle in here. So I would usually start Sorry. down at the bottom <laughs> and work my way up. Sorry. Yes, but I wasn't able to do that. So whilst I'm at it and before I forget. They know I cock it up every Oh, week. honestly. So I'm going to start with the arms. Because you can't necessarily get right to the end of the arm, I'm just going to cover up the end of his hand with a piece of sugar paste. And then I'll go with the other one and do exactly the same. Just cover it up. And it means if I don't put the bandage all the way to the end, yeah. that I've kind of got something going on. Now, for this one, I'm not even going to bother gluing it because we're wrapped at a nice sort of horizontal level. So I know it's not going to go anywhere. And it is as easy as that. Just keep wrapping it around. Obviously, Do if you you've got... Do you No, it's all right, because I'm not going to be here for long. You're going to take over in a minute. And what? Yeah. <laughs> So basically, you're just going to keep wrapping round and wrapping round. And then we could end up going round the edge of the body and just bringing it round wherever it finishes, let it finish. Yeah. Okay. So the most time consuming thing about this, I think really, is just sitting and cutting some strips. If we started with the head, take it at the front and then I'm just going to go round. You'll find it will probably do once round. I cannot see what I'm doing at all, so I don't know where I'm putting it. But basically there until it's done and on. And yeah. just keep layering them up. Yeah. Don't go too neat with this either. You know how a mummy's got bandages that's kind of all over the place? Just, just go with it, basically. The body would get completely wrapped. You'd go down the legs, but I'd start with the legs and then I'd go around the body, which Carol's going to do in a minute. You do not need to watch me doing that for 10 minutes. So, Carol, I'm just going to pop this here. In fact, let's swap the other way around. You go that side. So what I'm doing, just rolling this out. Rolling it out, cutting into strips. If you remember, use the thingy as a, as a doodah thing. And we'll do some airbrushing. Did you bring, well, you brought that white pad from me back. Thank you. Do you know, I am forever getting chocolate ganache out of my nails. Right. Let's have a bit of a tidy up. Okay. So airbrushing tonight, all we're actually going to airbrush is just some gentle shading, which we'll come to in a bit. But if I thought you'd never held an airbrush before, wouldn't it be nice to know what they did? Are you all nodding? Thumbs up. Good. Okay. So, in the world, forget the brand, there are only two types of airbrush. Okay? One is called a single action airbrush, and one is called a dual action airbrush. Quite often people have heard the terms but don't know what they mean. A single action airbrush always has airflow and it requires one action to make it work, and that's you pulling back the trigger. A dual action airbrush, when you turn it on, has no airflow, and it requires two actions. One of you pushing down the trigger, one of you pulling back the trigger, in order to make it work. So dual action, single action. A dual action airbrush is amazing, but it's for graphic designers, and I felt when I designed an airbrush for cakes that it was too much. So I've gone with a single action airbrush. This is the compressor here, and if you've not seen the Dinky Doodle one before, 
then basically it's just a nice plain surface. The button's located underneath. It's wiped clean. You've got a holder on the side that your airbrush will go in place. And that's what we call the three cc cup. So that holds three cc's of fluid. But you only actually ever fill it half full. So let's take a look at how you fill it and what you do with it. Basically, take it off where it's <laughs> vibrating and making funny noises. You're gonna hold it like a pen, okay? You're gonna pull back the trigger and that's what's gonna make it work. When you hold it like a pen though, you're not gonna hold it horizontally. So loads of people airbrush like this. They also stand well back because they're a little bit scared. And then they start airbrushing. And what you'll find is they'll get the entire room. So all the way across there is where they're airbrushing and they're making a mess. And I know loads of people, Carol, say about yeah. a box, don't they? Yeah. Should I airbrush inside a booth? Yeah. Well, I was reading that this weekend on Facebook. People yeah. were asking about getting a, a kiddies pop-up tent. So a kiddies pop-up tent. Okay, so these are my issues with any kind of booth. If it's not got an extractor in it that's going to take all of that airbrush mist, then all it's doing is going around the box. And it goes round around the box and then it settles. And if you were doing an ombre cake where you only wanted blue at the bottom, I guarantee you, you'll have blue over the entire cake because it's in that box and it's got nowhere to go. What you actually need to do is learn to airbrush at the right angle and then your overspray doesn't go too far. So basically, rather than airbrushing at that horizontal, I want you to point down. And when you point down, your overspray will only go here, basically, and you'll get far less. So let's take a look at what we can do with it. When we start airbrushing, we always work with our lightest colour first because it allows us to work through our colours. Without cleaning, we can, we can literally just go with yellow, go with blue, then go with brown, go with black, and all we've done is empty out. Always, always, always have a piece of paper, kitchen paper, in your spare hand. Because, one, it allows us to get rid of the initial burst of colour. Two, it allows us to check our colour. And three, if we're wanting some tiny detail, we gain control and then lift and we can carry on. So how does it work is this? We've got two variables that we need to get used to. Variable number one, how far away I am from my project. So if I'm a good distance away, can you see at this angle, John, you all right? Mm -hmm. If I'm a good distance away from my project, then basically I'm going to get a nice wide spray. If I come down close to my project, then I'm going to get a really fine spray. So what I need to do in order to get the right amount of spray is work out, well, which angle do or how close to my project do I actually need to go? The second variable is this, how much I pull back the trigger. So if I'm a good distance away from my cake, I can get a good strong colour straight away. If I'm close to my cake and pull the trigger all the way back, that's when you make a mess. So when you've got those two variables sorted, there's nothing that you can't achieve with an airbrush. It's as simple as that. And it's like trying to work out a biting point with a clutch on cap. When you've sorted out your particular biting point, you're good to go. So, how are you getting on there, Carol? Yeah. <laughs> that we've finished or I've finished playing about with an airbrush we might just have the head covered and you'll have to imagine what the body might look like guys I am traumatised after ruining the ganache don't Twice. worry I've ruined Louise Rimmo's ganache I've now ruined yours it's quite alright well. yeah no we're having fun it's absolutely fine so um, basically we can do all sorts of stuff and I know what folk like me to do most is wood grain so Give us a thumbs up now and a like. Hit the like button, please, if you'd like me to show you how to do wood grain airbrushing. Is there any thumbs up coming, John? There will be soon. <laughs> yeah, because there's a second <laughs> delay. Yeah. And then I'll just stand there for a minute. It's a long time when you're ready for the Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yeah, really long time. Let's assume that's what they want to see. Sorry? Let's assume that's what they want yes. to see. Oh, yes, yes, yes. All the thumbs yes, up are coming. Yes, all the thumbs up are coming. Yeah, lots okay. of them. Lots of them. So, guys, what I've done is got yellow in the airbrush and then I've added a touch of brown. Now what you'll find is, is that the brown is heavier than the yellow. It's weird, but darker colours are heavier and it's going to sink to the bottom. So I need to mix the two colours. And I mix the colours the same way that I would clean them. 
So if I block the ends of the airbrush and I pull back the trigger, can you see me blowing bubbles? Well, that's now just blown the two colours together and they're now mixed, so I've got my lighter colour. I would do the same thing when I'm using that cleaning solution. So rinse, 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 block it, blow bubbles, and you'll flush the colour out. So I'm now going to go very, very gently over my sheet with this light yellow brown. Don't worry about the speckles there, it's wood grain, it'll do. One of the easiest things in the world I learned to do this is when I'd got an order for a cake that needed, to, it was a cricket bat for Gunnar North, for GM, and it needed to look real. And the lady that taught me how to make cakes was the president of the British Sugar Club Guild. If Karen Davis is still with us, she will know Pam Wakefield very well. Pam, if you are watching, I love you dearly. So basically, I said to Pam, there must be a way that I can airbrush uh, wood grain on. She went, yeah, there is, but I'll let you figure that out. Thanks, Pam. Best lesson she ever taught me. I've torn a piece of paper, okay? And I'm gonna place the piece of paper on my project. I'm using that as my checking point. Remember that piece of kitchen paper I had in my hand? Well, I'm checking my color and making sure it's okay. Still a bit light. I'm gonna add some more brown. A Little bit more. Mix up the color again, although that brown should overtake it. There we go. And all I'm gonna do is walk up and walk back down again. Basically, the best thing I can ever teach you about airbrushing is to not airbrush the cake. You airbrush the stencil, and your overspray will do the rest for you. I'm just gonna tear it a touch of thinner, because each grain of the wood shouldn't touch another one. So, right down inside there, to about there or about do me. Again, check in my color, up and then down, and then again, up and down, and then again. Then, I'll turn myself a little bit of paper, turn it round. There are loads of people when I do this to know this, I can't tear paper like you. Did you ever supposed to know I run a paper tearing class? It's only £175. Pounds. I'm kidding, folks. Okay. Oh. You'll be giving me a bandage class. I will be giving you a bandage class. I should be giving you a how to heat ganache class. <laughs> She's not going to invite me back. Do not look at her. <laughs> it's Brill. It's a mummy. It's a mummy. It's, there's no wrong with that. There's no wrong with that. That's fine. John, come back this way. It's got a hat. It's got what? It's got, it's I got like that that's a good hat. Do you know, in fact, in all fairness, I've drawn the back to the hat. That's exactly what I would have done. Is it? Yes, it is. I was there because, what I'm going to do here. because you're not going to want to go all the way around. I would only put one more on to cover up the hat. <laughs> Join. But that's it. Okay. So I've now torn that piece of paper into two bits. And I'm going to come down one side. And then I'm going to move my piece of paper and come down another. Down another. And then down another. Flip that around. Paper tearing classes. Do you know? Is there a, I can provide a link to my paper tearing class. I am joking, guys. It's just torn paper. But please, if it keeps me in work, I'll run a class in it. Okay, then I'm very, very gently going to go over the whole thing again just to bring it together. I've run out of colour. But you see how far that little cup of colour went? Loads. So you don't need kind of bigger cup. And just go over it goes. And then, there it is. Easy peasy, wasn't it? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Got nothing to do with mummies, but it's one of them things that if you've never picked up an airbrush before, guys, you need to do. What I generally suggest to people, if you've never airbrushed before, remember about getting those two variables right, you need to buy a cheap children's colouring book. If you can get a cheap children's colouring book, the one with those horrible grey, disgusting thick pages, and airbrush and keep the page dry, then you're not giving it too much trigger. And if you can colour within the lines, then you know that your um, hand-eye coordination for the distance you are away from the cake is also spot on. Work your way through the colouring book, and again, there won't be anything that you can't achieve with an airbrush. So whilst I'm using yellow and brown tonight on these cakes, the little sets that we're doing have got 
the red, yellow, blue in them, there's your primary colours. We've also got black and white, so I can now lighten and darken everything, as well as having black and white. We've also added nice popular colours like the orange, the greens, the browns, the pink and the violet. So I think you've got 10 colours there yeah. and a cleaning solution. So whilst Carol's just finishing off that head, let's take a look at cleaning the airbrush. So, all I would do is empty out the airbrush and then with water, normal water, I would basically be rinsing this through. Now I have a cleaning station at home, which is a little glass jar with a lid in it. You could use a coffee cup, disposable coffee cup, or a disposable soup pot, pop a hole in the top, put some kitchen paper inside, and then just spray into there. So spray once and get rid. When you've sprayed a couple of times with water, then basically take your cleaning solution now to make sure that it's clean, and I'll get another bit of kitchen paper, but block again and blow bubbles. But what it does is flush out whatever's in here, in there and then out and dilutes it basically. Once your bubbles are clear, your airbrush is clean. As simple as that. And I have got, anyone that's on here will be able to vouch for me, but um, I've got um, loads of tutorials on airbrushing, troubleshooting, hints and tips. And if anybody ever, ever has an issue with anything that's got written, dinky doing designs written on it, I am always there and available to help. Available about 23 and a half hours a day, usually. I need half an hour off for some kit. Carol has done an amazing job here. We haven't got the body done, but we'll not worry about it. We're we'll, let you do the body. We'll crack up. Well, I don't know if I can remove the bottle yet. <laughs> Honestly, folks, this is the reason why you make one in advance. The demo cake oh, never yeah, sees. I missed that. Did you miss that? Yeah, well, the two years. She was too busy. What were you doing? <laughs> <laughs> you <laughs> but guys, the demo cake never ever sees the light of day. It is the one that goes in the bin faster <laughs> than you can say Halloween mummy. But I think you've done a grand job there. Yeah. That's all right. I'm keeping yours for the photos. Yes. <laughs> oh, I like I am. Yes, I see. I see. I might be brave enough and see if the bottle will come out, yeah? Yeah, that's set now. We're all all right. We're all all right. Whilst we're finishing up later, then I might just finish it. But let's get some airbrushing on it, shall we? Well, yeah, so, throw some more. Yeah, no, you keep going. Let's keep going. Your, uh, yeah, thank you that. Keep going. Yeah, no, we need to finish the whole thing for him. Are you, are you with us till midnight? No, okay. we'll take us no. Yeah. Uh, how do you put the feet on? Come on. Okay. Let's do the feet. Uh, so. You do the feet and I'll uh, go over all some more of this. So basically the feet is two balls. You can usually start with one ball and cut it in half. I've lost my knife. She's got my knife. Oh, but yeah, sorry. whenever you're doing something that's symmetrical on either side, um, eyes, anything like that, always start, there you go, Karen. always start with one and cut it in half and then you know they're the same size basically. So the foot look, it's this complicated, Carol. <laughs> it's stick a ball of sugar paste <laughs> at the front. Ta -da! That's it. Nothing's, go right feet could go. Nothing's too complicated on this oh, one. At all. At all. Now you'll notice really good kind of tip is that we've got a bit of cake frame sort of sticking up out the back. When I had ganache that was a little firmer set, then basically I would have just gone over that with a bit of ganache, turned it into the shoulders, whatever, I'd have disguised that. And of course it's got the, the bandages going around it and stuff, so you wouldn't kind of really see it anyway. Um, but yes, well, I'll, whilst Carol's finishing that, then let's get some airbrushing on it. I thought you were moving those to just be out of the way of the shot, but John has moved the sweets to eat the sweets. Oh. John, if you Thanks, eat all the, yeah. <laughs> If you eat all the sweets, you're not going to fall out because that is what I'm heading for straight after this is finished. Straight after this is Somebody, finished. Patricia just actually asked, what, this, what are the sweets for? So she's obviously missed what you've done. Okay, so if you've just joined us, the sweets are inside the head. So we've carved out some of the cake in the middle. You'll be able to watch this back or you can watch it on Cake Frame Club YouTube. And um, yeah, so they are in the middle of the cake, along with some lime green buttercream. And basically, when we go to cut the cake, all the bits will fall out. Be quite yeah, good. Can fun. I do some strips then? Yeah, yeah, yeah just plonk some strips down, and I'll plonk them on in a minute. Um, so airbrushing, we've got that same yellow and brown in. Again, you want a piece of spare paper in your hand just to check that you've got the colour that you like. And I'm very gently 
Look at how, oh, it's actually quite yellow, that. Let's blow some balls. There we go. You're going to put a white out on this. Yeah. Are we going to white out? So don't go too far away. It's still very yellow, this. You can just start to pick up just a little bit. Guys, less is more. So don't go mad. Like you can concentrate. If I wanted to concentrate on this bit and I didn't want to get the rest of it, that's what your kitchen paper is for. Actually hold that in place. And you should just be able to airbrush over. I'm going to go, I'll probably give it more airbrush than I would normally, just so you can see it so we've not got a complete amount of white out. But just pick up a bit of the detail. Right, now Carol's made me some strips that I can go with. Let's get the legs in the way. I'm going to leave a bit for the front and then I'm just going to wrap round. If you find this isn't sticking because we're going vertically for rods, then just brush it over with some glue. Do you want a bit of bowl of water? I think we're all right, to be fair. And I've got the glue and the paintbrush, so we'll see how we get on. I'm just going to push this down so actually we can't hopefully see any cake frame. But if you'd have covered these legs completely in ganache, it wouldn't have mattered. If anything, no, I didn't mean that. Sorry, Carol, I didn't mean to have a go at you again. I promise I won't do that anymore. But I'm if we know, don't ever ask Carol to ganache. Oh, no, 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 no. It was my fault. If I'd have done it, I'd have made the mistake too. Um, but it just means that it wouldn't have mattered if you'd have left some exposed ganache showing with where I was going with that. So wrap this round. See, it doesn't actually take long to cover the legs at all. All the arms, for that matter. So round it goes. I can get to about sort of where the body starts now. So this bit is the tricky bit because you've just got to go under those arms. That one I think is going to have to finish about there, and then we can just pop that bit on there. It's a bit tricky to decorate the cake from the back when you can't actually see the front. Well, I don't know, managing because I struggled. Yeah. I uh, prefer to spin it around. Like that. Well, you can look, it's that easy to, to sort of do and to spin around. I'll put that one diagonally across there and probably break that off and start again just Are you going to be at Cake International this year, Dawn? I will be at Cake International. I will be on the Cake Frame stand. So Cake Frame, as always, has a stand. And also, I will be demoing live on stage at 12 noon, and I'm going to make stuff move. I'm going to show you how easy it is to put movement in cakes, and I'm going to make something truly fantastic. It's top secret at the moment, can't share it with you. Then at one o'clock, we've got the final of the cake off, which I've sponsored, and I am giving them a £600 cash prize. Because, bless them, Cake International suggested, wouldn't it be nice if they had some of my products? Well, the guys are all professional cake decorators. They've probably already got an airbrush and some cake frame and everything else. <laughs> if it was me and I was entering, I'd want cash. Yeah. Cold hard cash. So that's what we're going for. So yeah, you'll be able to catch me there, so I'm judging that as well. Um, and then I've also sponsored an award, I've sponsored Cake Hero Award at uh, Cake Masters. So I'm looking forward to a superb night there, it's one of my favourite categories is um, Cake Hero. So really, really, really looking forward to Cake International this year. Please, please, please. What's Cake Hero? So Cake Hero is like, who is your Cake Hero? Who is the one that you look up to? It doesn't have to be a famous cake decorator, oh, it could be. Mean, you are my, to be fair, John. John's my hero. John made me dinner. It was beautiful. We had the, Thank most, you, we had the most amazing dinner. In, in fact, I even managed, when I rented the cake frame out, I've got a spare Tupperware pot. I filled it with food to take home. That's how good it was. <laughs> you didn't really want me to share, did you, what goes on behind the camera before we start? Too late. Um, I'm just going to stick a few more of these on here. If they'll stay, and then now I probably do need my glue and my paintbrush. So, Carol, I think you've actually done an amazing job, my lovely. 
that you have. So folks, if you are struggling to get it to stick, once you've got to the sugar paste stage and not a ganache stage, you will probably get it, struggle to get it to stick. And if you've got sort of blank cake frame, again, it, that'll do me, I think. Can I? Which, which day is your live demo? On the Saturday, so Saturday at 12 Probably. noon. Okay. And as I say, on Cake International, I am making something move. And it is going to be very, very fun and exciting and something that then you'll be able to achieve at home. So I'm sharing some real kind of top secrets, basically. I think that'll do this for Stripe. The question is, is, is this cake made just using the starter kit? So, what we started with was the Minion Kit. The Minion Kit basically has, give me two seconds, I'm going to carry on answering that question. Carol, come here. I'm going to be really mean now. Carol, in here is a mixture of yellow and brown. Oh, no. Basically, stay about yeah, this rubbish. far away from the cake. Mm -hmm. Okay? This far away from the cake, and we're just going to do a little bit of airbrushing. Oh, yeah. I see. Don't, don't, don't yeah, <laughs> don't airbrush the thingy. Okay? Are we having a yellow mummy on it? Well, it's supposed to go for brown now. I should tip a bit of that out. That's a sweet So. I did tell everybody I was going to be mean and let Carol loose with the airbrush. So I don't know which one. Squeeze it. This, this here. So I want you to hold it like a pen and I'm going to pull back the trigger. Right, there. That's, that's the brown. Okay. okay. Right. Back to that other question. So. What do we use to start with? Well, the basis of this is actually the Minion Kit because it's the one that's got the two-legged support. What you'll find in the starter kit is a 10-inch round baseboard with five holes to it. Now, you can't actually line up a two-legged figure on that without it going towards the back. And if I took it with me, you can refill it with more brown if you need to. If I took a six inch platform and actually lined that up, what you'll find is, there we go, it has to line up right at the back. And then can you see how far the platform is off the back? So that was why I then invented the two legged support. So what I've done is use the minion kit for extras because it won't allow me to take anything that high, but all of cake frame slots together. So I've got a rod selection pack, some connectors, those X and Y joints, all of which we're going to put on a list as to what we've used. But that digs into the starter kit. Now the starter kit is cheaper as a whole than it is, it's beautiful, than it is than buying um, all the bits separately. So if I can just explain to you what is left, even though we've used all of that and we've built all of that, if I wanted to make a pouring kit, I've still got a 10 inch round base board. I've still got the long foundation. I've got my elbow joint. And then I've got some rods. So I can post my cake on there and have something for an angle. So I've still got the pouring kit. I've also still got another kit that stuff. comes separately, which is the Tears and Spears kit. And with that, we've got a short foundation like so. And then basically the platforms go on. Let me just need to dip into this one. Promise I'll replace it. So you've seen us tonight secure stuff with a foundation piece. But in the Tears and Spears kit, you add the rods together. And then when you're ready to support the next tier of cake, I can hear you chewing those sweets, my <laughs> John. Then basically, you're just teasing me now. So basically, that's how you support a tier of cake. So there's one underneath, then the next one, then the next one, next one. So you've still got a three-tier wedding cake kit. Left, we've not even touched. Yeah. And you've still got it. Also, you might want to take stuff off at an angle. Well, if you wanted to make... Somebody's saying, what's the best airbrush machine? Can't believe that. The Dinky Doodle, funnily <laughs> enough. Jazz Dylan. So, I might want to make something topsy-turvy. Now, loads of people think that the elbow joint that I use for the pouring kit is where we take stuff at an angle, but actually, that'll take too much weight off and it starts making things all wobbly. Instead, what we do is use the single angle joint 
with the other rods in place, you don't put your platform down straight, you put it at an angle and that's what makes your topsy turvy kit. So you've still got a topsy turvy kit as well as everything else that you've got going on. So you've got angles, you've got joints, you've got more rods, you've got more foundations, you've got boards, you've got platforms, you've got a four and a six inch, and you've got your minion kit. All of it goes in the dishwasher. All of it can be just simply taken apart. I'll use it again, do something else with it, and the job is a good one. That's how easy it is. I am always available to answer questions. I'm trying to put as much as I can on Facebook on different tutorials. So if somebody said to me, how do I make a bubble cake? I'd say, take a look at the mummy, change the design, change the style, but the structure is the same. How do I put arms out at an angle? Take a look at this cake because da 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 da. For instance, I've done a strawberry basket. It looks like the lid of the, the wicker basket is on an angle, like they're open. That's that topsy-turvy cake. That's it, but just in a different kind of form. Um, so yeah, those that miss which is the best airbrush, I'm biased. Um, Dinky Doodle, my brand, um, obviously. Um, to be fair, if you're thinking about getting an airbrush, you can't get hold of a Dinky Doodle airbrush, what you need to consider is what is the best type for you? Probably the single action airbrush is the way to go. Go with a reputable dealer, go with something that's got a good guarantee and customer support. You will need to talk to somebody at some point about that airbrush because you won't know what you're doing with it, you won't know what's gone wrong with it, things are dead easy to fix and I've got loads and loads of stuff on YouTube to help you out. So Webster says, first time watching and she's hooked. Thanks there Sarah, I will be here next week but Karen Davis, the god who is Karen <laughs> Davis, is with them next week. So there's all sorts of things that you can learn from Karen. And Karen, I don't use moulds often, and when I do use them, I use them in a very different way. But what I love about Karen Davis moulds is they're absolutely perfection. There's something for every theme. They are the most beautiful moulds. And when you're able then to turn them into something else, they're just so, you know, the driftwood or the whatever, and what she's done with that ornate pearl, and she turned it into the board. And, Never mind, oh, I'll get back to your minion Sorry. Trip. And your chocolate on my face. I've always got chocolate on my face. So, back to the minion cake. Well, it's done. It's done. It's done. Actually, I quite like it now, actually. Carol oh, has done up. an amazing, amazing <laughs> job. What I want to share with you, Fine. Uh, no, I'm leaving the chocolate on my face. <laughs> so I like it. What Carol has done, bless her, I've put her on the hop. She's not only airbrushed, but she's put this cake together with me. Um, even with our runny ganache, I think we've had a really good job. Oh, sugar on the board. Oh yeah, sugar on so the board. So last thing, sugar on the board. I would put a bit, a, bit of, a bit of piping gel on here, just to help the sugar stay put. But take some golden sugar, it can either be caster sugar or granulated sugar, dark brown sugar if you want to, it doesn't really matter. But it makes great sand. And then loads of people say to me, well how do you transport a cake like this? Well, sometimes in cake frame, you can take stuff apart. Mm. So, John, if you wouldn't mind looking at fast food cake. So, um, a few people have asked, can you explain again the kits and the balloons? I will. Let's do a quick overview. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, they're all loving it, by the way. So, this one here, I wouldn't oh, transport like that, basically. I'd take off that cake. There's the foundation piece. Look, that's what keeps it in place. And then I'd transport it like this. When I transport the cake, what I do to help it is take a box and whee, there's balloons everywhere. Basically, we're going to pop our little guy in the box. Don't be afraid of getting hold of these cakes. So hang on the top, hang on to me. Whee! Chuck sugar everywhere. <laughs> do you know I am stood? That's like on the beach. Come on, look at the feet. It's like I am stood. I've been told not to film the floor. On the beach. I, I get repeatedly told not to film the floor. No, it's it's beautiful. I'm gonna someday in that later on. So anyway. Carol's in bitch, she's gonna kill me in a minute. I'm not bothered, that was just so but, good that you chucked it over yourself. Oh, it was. So, anyway, basically, you can now fill your box with balloons. They are soft enough not to damage the cake. And I've got one more if I actually chucked I think it, you it, knocked it over. It's, it's on the floor. <laughs> so you build them to suit whatever it is that you need, but basically, you're gonna wedge the balloons in. When you wedge the balloons all the way around, you can't go anywhere. Please, 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 guys, make sure that nobody's allergic to latex. Yeah. And do blow the balloons up with a blue blower, not your mouth, yeah. so that we just keep everything nice and hygienic. 
But that basically... We like sharing stuff here. I know, no, 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 we don't care at all. So basically that's how I would transport him. So that's a really, really, really helpful tip. We'll get him out of the box again in a minute. You want me to go You're going to chuck some more sugar over I'm not going to chuck any more sugar over Do explain, if you put piping gel on, that would have stuck to it. That's why I said you needed piping gel. Yeah. If you'd have put piping gel on and not in the big lumps. That, have you seen the lumps, the size of the sugar lump that I am actually putting on there? That was just no way that was going to stay still. What I was actually trying to show off with, if I'm honest with you, is the fact that you can chuck cake frame about and the cake doesn't yeah. go anywhere. Well, it didn't. Clearly, the sugar, <laughs> on the other hand, goes absolutely everywhere. Do you want me to pull this box out of the way? Yes, bear with me and let me just get a hand underneath him. That's what I was trying to show. Yeah. That you can do that and the sugar doesn't go everywhere. <laughs> I don't think... Do you know I was doing so well neat and tidy until this point? I can't until, you threw really, until you threw chocolate oh, all over your face. I can't now move around. <laughs> OK. Come back this way, John. Away from the mess and we'll go through these kits again. Let me put this cake right That's why you're such a cutie, Dom. <laughs> <laughs> I am... So, seriously, if my husband's watching, he's... Cursing me, and honestly, he's with you, Carol, because this is what I do at home, he's making a massive mess. <laughs> so, you could go with a minion kit, that'll do all sorts of different standing things, but it won't do anything that's necessarily as long as, and that's $14.99 on its own. Yeah. The cross and the Y joint, that's the one that allowed me the versatility with the joint, the arms yeah. going out, and that is $3.99. $3 yeah. So, that is your minion kit. You also get full instructions. And you get all sorts of bits and pieces in there with that one. The starter kit then basically is 40, is 40 quid on its own. And it comes with loads of, loads of stuff. But it basically comes with your baseboard that's got your five holes in it. There's your six inch platform, your four inch platform. There's your three tiered wedding cake kit. You've got your foundation piece in long and short. You've got the rod selection pack, which has got your versatility in. There was the adapters, remember I needed one of those in the Minion kit. These are the blanking caps and you use them to blank off the holes that you don't need when you're doing a cake. Elbow joints, you can either use them as an elbow joint or there's my pouring kits. The single angle joints will also make other arm joints but there's my versatility for my um, topsy-turvy kits. And, mm. sorry Carol, go on. I was going to say, if you buy both those kits together, the Minion and the Starter, and they buy it tonight and tomorrow, they get a free chocolate line, a free line. Let me pour those up. Sugar. Where did they go? I don't know. Oh, there yeah. So, we get those as well. And we're, we're chucking some bloom lights. She can so, buy the bloom lights anyway. Guys, if you buy the Minion kit, this kit, the starter kit, they which... They get the X and Y free. They get the X, you get the X and Y free in. Yeah, so if you so buy this, and this, and that, we're giving them the X and Y free. You're giving free. the X and Y free. You're getting this and this if you buy tonight. Yeah, so they're saving three, uh, four, eight, 11 quid. 11 quid. Is that including the money that you're giving them off the kits as well? That is it. That's the, yeah. That's, yeah. And we're chucking in the balloon lights as well. Yeah. Just so they've got If you there. order during the rest of the week, it's just that. Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. But if you order tonight, it's Until Friday. Friday. Yeah. And John's sleeping in a tent. Because we're bankrupting it. <laughs> and basically, all of that will give you also, honestly, it's it's a good deal. And don't forget, it's reusable, so you just keep yeah, basically reusing. It. If you wanted to, because you've used all your rods and all the rest of it, you can obviously buy more. It, you know, it is available yeah. separately. Then there's the airbrush kit. How much have you got the airbrush kit on for? Um, £17.99. £99. So £99 for the airbrush kit. These are like rocking horse poo. Um, it should be £129. Yeah, should be 129 There is a black one, there is a hot pink one. It's not listed the difference on the website, please specify, which yeah. you require first come, first serve basis. Yeah. They will have sold out by the end of the evening. Um, DVD with me on it. Um, <laughs> funnily enough, how to make a burger cake, um, but not stacked. So there's loads of airbrush and hints and tips on there as well. Two year guarantee, this has got with it, you oh, know. Yeah, yeah, most electrical yeah. items just 12 months, mine is two years. Um, and. There's a set of colours. So tonight we've used the yellow and the brown, but there is your three primary colours, red, yellow, blue, black and white, you can now lighten and darken, but we've made life nice and pretty for you because we've added things like the orange, the green, the pink, the violet and the brown, and there's a bottle of that cleaning yeah. solution in there as well.
So 40 quid for a lot, and that's a little saving too. Yeah. And you've so seen, the colours that you use you've seen the how little colours we've used tonight. We've mm. just used a cup of colour. Those colours mm. are going to last you a long while. And they're water-based, um, so basically they'll just go on and on and on, a bit like makeup, really. Mm. So I think we're done. Yeah. Any questions, anybody? So we've just got to give them the 30 seconds. <laughs> so moment, ladies, yeah. any questions? So do we love it? Are we giving Dawn a big love and a like and telling her how marvellous she is? No. Eh? Oh, they're all coming through now. I can't believe a word you say. <laughs> genuinely, I'm humbled that anybody has tuned in to watch oh, tonight. Lovely. So genuinely, thank you, thank you, thank you very, very much. Hopefully, by me tripping sugar all over the floor, oh, you've had a bit of fun. All those love are coming in. So all the love are coming in. Hopefully, girls. you've really enjoyed this evening. We've had a bit of a laugh, haven't we? We've had some fun. Um, I can't say too much about what the future holds for me and Dinky Doodle Designs, but as anybody that knows me knows that I'm a pioneer in developing stuff and designing stuff and having a little bit of fun. Next time I come back here, we will have an absolutely storming episode for you when we're going to do some January. January, apparently. Yeah. Yeah. It's January, something storming. Can't be told. Storming, Norman. Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll have to wait till January. Okay then, so I just want to say a massive thank you Dawn for coming along, so let's be grateful. I'm very grateful for everybody who comes along, but everybody puts in a lot of effort when they come in on Monday night. They bring all their ingredients and they're under immense pressure here. And when they're building something, you've got to remember we're here for an hour and a half to two hours. It's a, it's a lot of time to you guys, but it's not enough time for us. If any of you were at home trying to put these things together at home, you'd like to spend a little bit more time and a bit more breathing space without everybody staring at you. No, know, we've done fantastic. But every every Monday night when we are here, we are here under pressure, um, mainly because we're trying to do things fast so that you don't get bored. And um, and if you were in your own home, you... Yeah, four hours yeah. I would expect to exactly. take on that if you were yeah. doing that at home. But how quickly and easily has she done that in such a short time, which is amazing. Which is something I think the kids could manage. You could do that with the kids. Well, I have to say, I've never airbrushed before, and I thought that was very easy. There you go, you see. I like marvellous. I like just think you've done a great job. Yeah, and that lovely yellow, what's he called, Van Gogh? Be <laughs> 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 Van Gogh dummy. <laughs> mummy, mummy, <laughs> dummy. <laughs> I am a dummy. <laughs> Anyhow, guys, so I just want to say a big thank you to you for joining us again tonight. Um, next week, we've got Karen Davies joining us. She's got something new that she's bringing with her as well. Ooh. So uh, I've, I've, just seen seen it. That one. I've just seen it tonight, so I can't tell you anything about that until next week. So we're really looking forward to Karen coming along. Um, the week after... Yeah, the week after is me. You've got me, yes, I forgot, on the 9th of um, October. We might have an alternative guest yet, we're just waiting for them to confirm, but otherwise it will be just me. And then on the 16th, we've got FMM Cutters, Carol, um, I can't think what her name is, what's she called? Carol Mann. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right. Right. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So a big thank you, give us 15 minutes, go and have a cup of tea and a wee, as I always tell you to do, and Dawn and I will be back to say a few hellos to everybody and answer any questions. And again, tell you about the bundle kit. So that's a bye-bye from me. Thanks so much, guys. And a bye-bye from John and Maria. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>